What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to the show. So we're going to take a look and a listen to Representative Nagus talk about Social Security reform. He's going to be talking about the Social Security 2100 Act. So that's what we're going to focus on in this video. But first off, if you guys can do me a favor, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, hit that little bell notification, and then click all. By clicking all, you'll get notified anytime we post a video. We do daily videos here, so by clicking the bell notification and clicking all, you should be getting updated every day. And once again, thank you for your support. I really appreciate it. And one more way to support us is by joining our membership. Just click the join button below. You'll get customized emojis as well as custom badges. And then also consider signing our petition to increase Social Security benefits. All right, let's go ahead and we're going to take a look and a listen to Representative Nakus. He's going to be talking about Social Security reform. Here we go. Thank the distinguished gentleman from Connecticut, uh, our former caucus chair, for his clarion call that he has issued year after year, month after month, day after day, to protect, to strengthen Social Security. Couldn't be more important, and we couldn't be more grateful for his leadership and the leadership of so many of my colleagues who have joined us tonight on the House floor to talk to the American people about the ways in which House Democrats are protecting critical programs like Social Security and Medicare, and the myriad ways in which, unfortunately, our colleagues on the other side of the aisle are doing the exact opposite. I will give you but one example, Mr. Speaker, with respect to the latter. I know you are familiar, don't know if the American people are familiar, with the Republican Study Committee the largest caucus within the Republican conference. 80% of the Republican conference consider themselves members of this committee. 100% of House Republican leadership count themselves among the members of this committee. The former chairman of the Republican Study Committee is now the Speaker of the U.S. House of representatives. Why do I bring up the Republican Study Committee? Well, it might interest you to know, Mr. Speaker, that just two months ago, the Republican Study Committee issued a budget for 2025. Again, this is a committee that has 80% of the Republican conference in its membership. This backwards budget plan is incredibly revealing. What does it do? It upends critical programs that American families depend on, makes draconian cuts to Medicare and Social Security, a plan that increases the retirement age to 69, forcing Americans to work longer for less, a plan that cuts disability benefits, erodes care for children, making it more expensive to care for our families. Their plan raises Medicare costs for seniors, takes away the program's ability to negotiate prescription drug costs, repeals the $35 insulin and the $2,000 out-of-pocket caps that House Democrats, the members gathered here on the floor this evening, fought so vigorously to enact in the 117th Congress. And just to be clear, Mr. Speaker, although we're here tonight to talk about Social Security and Medicare, our efforts to protect and strengthen and expand both of those programs and Republican efforts to dismantle them, it is worth noting that this is police week. And notwithstanding the many statements made by my colleagues on the other side of the aisle concerning their purported support for law enforcement, their budget tells a very different story. Why? How? Well, I encourage every American, go to page 148 of the Republican Study Committee's budget, and what you will find is clear, unambiguous, plain language that states that they would like to reduce funding for community-oriented policing services, the COPS program, a program that the distinguished gentleman from Pennsylvania has fought to expand for years, a program that is funding the hiring 
of law enforcement officers in my district in Colorado and countless other jurisdictions across our great country, a program that is critical to law enforcement's abilities to provide for public safety in our country and a program that they intend to cut. So make no mistake, Mr. Speaker, insofar as one were to glean a central observation from a review, a cursory review of their budget, it is simple. House Republicans are uninterested in tackling issues that matter to the American people. We will not let them cut Social Security. We won't let them cut Medicare. We won't let them cut law enforcement funding. That much is clear. With that, Mr. Speaker and Mr. Chairman, I yield back to the gentleman from Connecticut. Okay, so that was Representative Nikus talking about Social Security reform. Uh, he also talked about Medicare there. He went over a, a variety of different things, but I just want to talk about some of the, the key points that he talked about. So he was talking about protecting, strengthening, and expanding Social Security. We need to hear all three of those things because you do have lawmakers out there that will say, yes, you know, I, I'm not going to make any cuts I'm going to protect Social Security, but that's all they're saying. And protecting Social Security can mean a variety of different things. OK, so they need to say more than just protect. So he said protect, strengthen. So make it stronger, make it last for another 50 to 75 years and then expanding Social Security, providing increases for Social Security beneficiaries. So those are the you need to hear all three of those or at least hear the reform and expansion to Social Security because you will have lawmakers that will say, no, I don't want to make any cuts to Social Security, or I want to protect the program. And even protecting the program, you can protect the program by making cuts, if you want to really think about it that way, because you can say, yeah, I'm protecting the program, but we're going to spend less on the program, so the program will last longer. So you have to, you have to understand some of these politicians, uh, they, they might say things, and you might think, oh, okay, well, they support Social Security, when in actuality they might be saying they might be saying different things he was talking about the republican study committee and we we talked about this on the channel where when they put out this information from the republican study committee talking about making cuts to social security they were talking about protecting social security but they were also talking about raising that full retirement age to 69. he said something that was key here and i thought i, I wanted to mention it work longer for less so he's talking about you raise a full retirement age, you're going to have to work longer, and then you're going to receive less of those benefits. And he was saying that because we all have an expiration date. We don't know what that date is, but if we're working longer, that means if we have to work until 69 instead of working until 67, then we're going to be able to collect less benefits. They say for every year that they raise the, the full retirement age, that's like a 7% cut. And so you can see that adds up really fast. And so if you're going to increase a full retirement age two years, that's a 14% cut. And that could be on top of more cuts that we don't know about already. So, I mean, when it comes down to it, we have support from certain lawmakers, and we need to make sure that we get the word out when it comes to the lawmakers that support Social Security reform and Social Security expansion compared to the lawmakers that want to do away with Social Security or might say that they want to protect the program, but they're going to increase the full retirement age and, and things like that. And so we need to show the difference between the two sides and get the people in office that, are, that want to expand Social Security. That's the easiest way for us to see reform. But in some cases, you will see people who are currently receiving Social Security benefits right now vote for people who want to do away with Social Security. You'll see it. And I covered this when it came to Mike Lee. Mike Lee is a senator in Utah. He was talking about dismantling Social Security and Medicare. And guess what? People voted him into office. And he's still there today. And so when it comes down to it, I know he said this a while ago. He said this in 2010 that he wanted to pull Social Security up. Uh, by the by its roots. He wants to do away with Social Security. That's what he said in 2010. But he hasn't really backpedaled off that. I haven't heard a plan come from him. The only plan that I heard come from him is that he wanted to do away with, with Social Security and Medicare. He hasn't come out since and said, yeah, no, this is what we want to do. We want to expand Social Security or we want to do this to fix the program. He hasn't said anything like that. And so you have to really pay attention to who you're voting for because some of the people that you are voting for 
they don't care about Social Security and they will let it be known. And if you vote for them and if you're currently receiving benefits and we, we should all be concerned because even if you're not currently receiving benefits, at some point in time in your life, you're probably going to be collecting Social Security. God willing, if you get to the age where you can collect Social Security, I would think that you're probably going to collect it. There are a very, very small number of people that don't qualify for Social Security benefits. Most people do. And so you'll be collecting at some point. And when you start collecting, do you want to have a politician in office that wants to do away with the program? Probably not. Or do you want to vote for someone who does away with Social Security, does away with the program before you get to that age where you can collect? And you've been paying into the system, paying into that payroll contribution your whole life, and then you get to that point where now you can start collecting. And you have politicians like Mike Lee and some of these other politicians that want to do away with the program. What if they get their way and they do away with the program before you even get to that age where you can start collecting? So this is a very serious situation. And uh, we'll be following up. I'll be doing some more videos. There are some more speakers there, so we'll we'll take a look at them and, and what they have to say when it comes to Social Security reform. But if you guys have any questions, let me know in the comments below. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe for more, and I'll talk to you in the next one. Bye.